interesting. You knew right away that um, Kathy Ritvo's horse, Mucho Macho Man. And I actually was, think California Chrome was in here too. Did you actively try to research and find this out? No. Or people just came no, up No, people to you and just love to overshare. Um, so it's actually, um, Bob Hess has been phenomenal. Um, one of the big things for us is we like to make sure our horse has his routine in his round pen. And so we, um, and before we ever scheduled to come out, that was kind of a big deal for us to make sure that we had that opportunity for the horse. And so this area, and I wanted to be far away. My horse loves to go for long walks and have his space and his time out of the stall. So this was pretty far away from the track, as you guys know, by hiking up here. And um, they were able to accommodate that for the horse. I mean, do you believe in like karma and stuff like that? I mean, is it like... I believe in a lot of things. <laughs> so that was something you were happy to hear that those hosts, because it doesn't hurt, right? We'll take any good juju you can get. <laughs> so what's it like being you these days? Exhausting. <laughs> Is it like, I mean, when you start off the year, what were you, what was your anticipation? I mean, if somebody had told you fast forward. I, I am, I don't, I just don't think in that way. Um, I'm very um, in the moment. Um, and I've been asked where that comes from or why and um, I think some of it probably comes just from being an athlete and doing you know show horses growing up and competitive golf when I was older and other sports where if you don't stay in the moment and stay focused on your task at hand you can lose th details along the way so you know we've just really stayed focused on each day each day each day and let the horse take us you know where he's gonna take us. How has your competitive golf and that was in college? No, as a young adult, actually. Wildly, yeah. Well, how has that translated into, has it had an impact on your career as a trainer? Um, I think the golf and, you know, showing both where, you know, if you're jumping eight jumps in a class and you miss on the first one, if you carry that to the next jump and the next jump and the next jump, you, you will make that the same mistake over and over and over because you're thinking back there. So I think as, you know, growing up with that, you just have it and you have, it's just a mindset and then you know all the golfers out there you mess up on 10 and you carry that through you're probably gonna have a really bad back nine and so you really have to learn to be uh, mentally focused and disciplined and, and structured in that regard well you haven't had any bogeys with this horse <laughs> <laughs> look at you <laughs> Depends what social media you're listening to. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you pay a lot of attention to social media? I don't. Or no? I really Is turn out the white the focus noise. To try to yeah, it's listen. Every, it's great that people want to talk about what we're doing in our sport, not just us in our story, but. The more people that are talking about horse racing, the better it is for all of us. And so happy to be able to provide, um, you know, banter for them to have fun with and, and talk about it. And that's the most healthy thing that we can have happening in, in what we're doing. You know, you mentioned um, only half joking. I'm sure that it was exhausting being you these days. <laughs> but if you had envisioned what it'd be like being in the limelight, is this what you... I, I just... You know, I don't, I just don't process in that way. I definitely appreciate where you're coming from with the question. So it's, it's just uh, being us and being authentically who we are and showing up every day and, and doing the best that we can every day. And, you know, we'll hang on to his little tail strings and it's his journey. And I think that's always been our focus is to make sure it's his journey and whatever we accomplish because of his journey, my gratitude and appreciation for him will always be there. Well, from the story that I read of, of Mike's about your owner, uh, from the time he bought the horse, he thought this was a horse with a future. I mean, what did you think when he showed up in, in your shed row? Uh, we were fortunate to get him at the farm first and put a little bit more time into him there, trying to teach him to grow up a little bit and, and to find his own way. And so really getting to learn his personality before being at the racetrack was very helpful, I think, for him especially. And that's where we learned about his personality being so big and who he is and him needing that space and that time for himself to, you know, Colts can be pretty sarcastic, you know, and they're not always, there's a handful that can be mean, but as a lot of, you know, horse people tell you, a lot of times they're not being mean, they're just being big sarcastic teenagers. And so just really making sure that we're listening to him and letting him have his sarcastic teenage moments when he needs them is important. So what is a sarcastic teenager telling you? Get out of my way again. <laughs> no, he's, he's happy and we're just trying to stay out of his way. So we know the pre-entries, your thoughts on the field for the class. First time he takes on older horses, obviously. Um, it's going to be what it's going to be. You know, I need, and that's where it, it'll be a great race for the fans and for, for the industry and, you know, all of those kinds of things. But it, it doesn't move the needle. And 
and how and what we do. You know, we've done all our preparations at this point, so it's making sure he's well and happy and thriving into the starting gate. You have a, you, you train him every 10 days or so, depending mm -hmm. on what he Reason. tells you. Mm -hmm. Is that uncommon for you? No, no, and we'll bump horses around. That might be a seven day for a couple of weeks and then maybe give them 10 days. Or if we went and did some gate work or gate schooling that I'm not gonna come back after popping out of the gate and breeze him then two days after that. So, you know, I think it's important to stay flexible. Um, people love to get stuck on their routine at times and sometimes we can miss details if we are too focused on um, what that spreadsheet looks like. You know, I've talked about that spreadsheet a lot. They yeah. don't quite care what those spreadsheets look like. And so, you know, one thing with Fiona, my assistant, and we talk a lot about that. It's just, you know, if she's like, oh, I think I'd want to wait on this one, then, then we wait. And then you go in three more days or whenever you mm -hmm. feel it's the right time to go. So, for instance, this morning, you told Mike yesterday that the horse was good train. Mm -hmm. He walked. So you got him out of the stall today and just decided, mm, let's give him a walk day. Um, I didn't love, he had a, um, I pulled a left hind shoe off of him, to be honest. You know, transparency is important. And so mm -hmm. I pulled a left hind shoe off yesterday afternoon. I said, oh, let's just walk tomorrow. There's no sense in going to do that we've got lots of time and so whether it's a you know he kicked the wall or bruised it or hit it I don't know you know so we just pull the shoe off and give him a walk day and assess where we are. The golf thing from were you at a, like a futures tour level? I did um did you do the I futures? did participate on I did several events in Florida um on the futures tour stuff and qualifier things and um my last tournament I uh I parted and I felt like it was a double bogey it was just one of those grinded out rounds and I'm standing there on the green and I'm like I like this but I don't love this you know and even a hard day in, in the horse world it was just always been more of a passion and you know and so it was just I literally knew in that moment that I was like I really enjoyed competing and you know, it's a single digit handicap and it was great to meet really cool people and see really amazing golf courses around the world and the country and I said just I'm gonna shut it down and try and enjoy it on a recreational level at some point. Collegiate golfer as well? I wasn't. I literally took it up by accident at a horseman scramble one year uh -huh. and just absolutely crushed it. I'm like, well, that was interesting. Where'd that come from? The idea of making history, the first female trainer to win a triple crown. I mean, that's, that's legacy stuff. <laughs> that's pretty. Yeah. And I think I'm just too um, close in it still right now that um, it's something that I think I'll be able to appreciate a little bit more when, when we're done. And so um, I'm very grateful that women have given that to me and, you know, that I've been able to, to can't carry that torch for them. Um, but right now we, we're still working our butt off. Now, now you're working on being the second female trainer to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. That's what they say. <laughs>